Hi everyone, thanks for joining me again. I thought I'd talk to you today a little bit about how the 5D Classic, that's the Mark I version, compares to the Mark II, the Mark III, and a little bit about how it compares to the Mark IV as well. Why you might choose one over the other, and which one's enough for you as well. Now the 5D Classic has become legendary amongst Canon camera owners for its color reproduction. It's weak low pass filter, which gives it nice sharp images, but it's slight film rendition. At the time when Canon were making the 5D Classic, they were trying to encourage people to come over from film to digital. So they wanted to make a sensor that looks a little bit like film. Now I don't think it looks like film, but it has that quality slightly that people are looking for from film cameras. So let's at least say that it has a very nice and pleasing rendition that isn't technically great, but is aesthetically pleasing. We're talking about something that isn't going to do well on a technical score sheet and isn't going to perform technically well. It's going to be very much something that gives you very pleasing images. And for some reason, when we talk about digital cameras, a large number of people seem to switch off from that. Sometimes people are looking at the 5D Mark II, III, and then the one, and then thinking, well, which one should I get? Which one do I need? What's best for me? So what I thought I'd do in this video is just talk a little bit about the comparisons, both in terms of the image quality and the image rendered, and the actual capabilities of the cameras. And what I will do is tell you about my experience because I've owned all of those cameras. I've shot professionally with all of those cameras so I can tell you about them, what they're actually real world like to use in terms of being different. So I'm gonna compare the 5D Mark I to, to the two, the three and the four individually. So compared to the 5D Mark II, what was the difference between the Mark II and the Mark I? The Mark II had a notably different color palette to the Mark I, but I thought that the Mark II's color palette in its own way was really nice and very, very good. Uh, the 5D Mark I files look much more creamy. That's the way I'd describe it, especially if you're talk talking about portraits, but just in general, there's this sort of smooth, silky kind of creaminess to the way the, the pictures look. The 5D Mark II, focuses much more on very pleasing kind of earthy brown tones and it looks lovely. It's a it's really, really good camera and takes very nice pictures. You can tell immediately that the files are bigger because of the megapixels. So the two will allow you to crop more, but I think that people should pursue trying to get as close to the crop they want in camera. But I also fully appreciate that sometimes you take a picture and then afterwards you see a different composition within it and then you crop it. I do that all the time myself as well and everyone should do what they want. But the Mark I will still somehow look sharper and due to the low pass filter that it has, which is very weak and the low megapixel count, I don't quite fully know how it works. It must be something to do with the processing on the sensor as well. But I do think there is something to having a full frame sensor with a low megapixel count that does make the pictures look slightly different. Um, the Mark II though, when we're talking about the technical ability of it, the focusing system's the same, so you're not gonna see any improvement in that. But the center point works relatively well. It's accurate, but not particularly fast. The outer focus points work well with certain lenses and are rubbish with others. And that's just, you have to, you can ask me if you want in the comments and I can tell you if, if I know a certain lens works well or not. Um, but generally speaking, I would assume that the outer focus points aren't gonna work that well. So you're gonna be down to focus and recompose, which is to use the, the middle focus point to focus on what you want, recompose the picture, and then take your shot. And that's okay, when you get used to it, it's quite an okay way of working with things. The screen on the back of the Mark II is bigger and higher resolution. The one, the screen on the back of the 5D Mark I is awful, but you can get histograms on it and you, if you can read histograms, you'll be okay and at least you can see your composition. And I would say that actually it's probably quite a good way to learn how to read histograms and not rely on like live view kind of stuff. Now on the Mark II, you do get live view as well, so you can, you get exposure simulation. So as you change your settings, you can see the results. You can't get that on the Mark I, and that's a noticeable difference. The screen being bigger on the Mark II though is really nice, and the ISO range goes higher, and the ISO performance is noticeably better too. Now, if you were going to try to get a budget way into having a professional setup, you should go with the Mark II, just simply because the Mark II is going to allow you those higher ISOs. And I think for a lot of people, when they're in real world situations and they're not just thinking about how they'd like things to go in a photo shoot, the Mark II is gonna be an easier camera to use, not only for the screen on the back, but also for the highest, higher ISO performance. You also get jumped up to a uh, better quality battery as well, which lasts a bit longer. The real distinction when shooting between the Mark I and the Mark II is the Mark II feels like a modern 
digital camera. The Mark I feels like a company's early or first go at producing a digital camera. You can see that they've learned ergonomics and so on from film cameras, but the implementation of certain things that are unique to digital, like the screen on the back and so on, are just not really particularly well done. But I will stress again that the 5D Mark I's rendering being unique and being a simple camera to use. The Mark III solved a couple of problems that people were screaming about on the Mark II, and that was the focusing system primarily. I think most people's frustrations at the time were you've got these like 50 millimeter 1.2 lenses and we're stuck on focus and recompose and it's not particularly fast either. And also that the, the low light focusing ability on the Mark I and Mark II wasn't good. Now the Mark III went out I think primarily to try and fix that problem with the focusing. That they, they upgraded a little bit of everything. The ergonomics took a, a noticeable jump up. They put on the button at the front of the camera, which was really good. And you got like a silent mode as well, which was not silent, but it was very quiet. And it really is quiet. I think it's very, very good for doing weddings. You got the dual card slots as well, which people wanted because cards were failing. You know, that whole thing with the card slots came about because there was a demand for it because cards were failing. So people wanted two card slots. So then they got two card slots. So they got that. But in terms of using the camera, the focusing system where I found, I shot probably 20 something weddings on the 5D Mark III. And <clears throat> here's what I found with it. It was like it was much faster and it was mostly more accurate, but sometimes it would just still, especially in low light, I would find that it would still just kind of give up. Whereas uh, the D700 would focus in low light still a lot better than the 5D Mark III would. However, what they set out to do essentially was to make lenses like the 51.2 and the 85.1.2 more usable. And they, di they did achieve that. They also upped the ISO capabilities of it to a really high point. Now, I would say that where the 5D Mark III sits is that I didn't like the files that came out of the 5D Mark III. I could probably say that I produced some of my best work on it, but at the same time, the dynamic range on the 5D Mark III, you know when people talk about Canon having bad dynamic range, it's okay under controlled conditions on the 5D Mark III. It's just that you can't go on to DxO Mark and compare the sensor scores, right? And say that the, the dynamic range on one camera is just flat, straight better than on another one because it's how they also deliver those specs. So let's say you've got 12 stops of dynamic range. It's not the same performance on one camera with 12 and another camera with 12, even within the same camera manufacturer. You, the 5D Mark III had this problem where it would create this sort of tartan style crisscross banding and mess in the shadow areas amazingly quickly. Now the 5D Mark I kind of did that too, but to have it on the Mark III felt kind of inexcusable. And the Mark II just didn't suffer from that as badly, so it kind of took a step backwards. And Canon sort of later repeated that with the 6D Mark II versus the 6D Mark I. The 6D Mark I had really good dynamic range uh, compared to the 5D Mark III. And actually what I'll do is I'll chuck in a little comment, a few comments about the 6D as well, because I had, I've had that for a while now as well. The 5D Mark III, for me, did improve the key things, the ISO, the screen on the back, and the focusing system over the Mark II. I prefer the Mark II. Although the Mark III is a really good camera. If you're going to shoot weddings and you're going to be shooting them in low light in winter and so on, do yourself a favor and get the Mark III for the focusing system and the high ISO. If you're going to shoot 50 millimeter 1.2 kind of lenses, I'd get the Mark III as well for the focusing system. But everyone else I think should get the Mark II. I just think the files out of the Mark II look better. The Mark IV for me was just an incremental improvement on the Mark III. And when I got it, I was almost immediately deflated and had buyer's remorse on it. Everything on the Mark III that was better over the Mark II was improved again on the Mark IV. It was just like, it didn't, to me, even feel like a new uh, mark of camera. It was like, I didn't think many of the other changes really amounted to a great deal. It, it was more like a firmware update rather than, a, than an actual genuine improvement. And that's what it felt like to me. And the negative side with the Mark IV was the battery life went down. So, you know, it's a, it's a tricky one. There's also a camera to consider as the 6D. And 
the 6D Mark I, uh, I'm not gonna comment on the Mark II because I haven't owned it, but the Mark I, to me, had the closest rendering to the, the 5D Mark I. It had the same focus point ar arrangement, but they were, they were better performing, and the center focus point is really good. It's fast and accurate and low light. And I prefer that to the 5D Mark III. Um, the 5D Mark IV is probably better at that, but the 6D Mark I had nice dynamic range. It didn't have, suffer the banding problems, and it has got some of that creamy look from the 5D Mark I. That, to me, gives it something extra, something special. The screen on the back is nice on it as well, and the ISO range is really good on it. I mean, I have no problem shooting up to 10,000 ISO on it. So if you need to shoot in low light, like at weddings and so on, it only has one SD card, so that's something you have to take into consideration. But it has good battery life as well. It has really nice battery life on it. And whilst it's a smaller camera body, the ergonomics and the, and the grip on it are very comfortable and very easy to use for long periods of time. So when we look at all these cameras together, what's my recommendations for you? For personally, I would say, unless you absolutely have to have really good outer focus points, I would scrap the Mark III and the Mark IV, and I would look at the 6D for professional work. That would be my choice, because the, the files rendered from it. And people don't stress this enough. You know, with digital, it's all about the sensor and the output from those files. It's all about that. If you get a 6D Mark I or a 5D Mark II, or let's say you own a 5D Mark III or IV, I would keep those cameras, and if you're interested in 5D Classic, I'd add it in. Now, I have shot professional work on the 5D Mark I, and I have no problem in doing that. It's just that you have to know what you're getting into with it. If you want to see my work on the 5D Mark I and a full breakdown review of why I think it's a brilliant camera, check out this video here.